Now I will, we are reached to our presentation today. Our presenter, his name is Bonciano Cavavanga. He is a specialist, public health specialist, with interest in inclusive practice. He is a PhD disability studies student at the University of Cape Town, South Africa. His PhD thesis is, is, is entitled The Mixed Experience of Pregnant Women with Physical Disabilities in Access and Accessing and Utilizing Antenatal Care Services in Rural Southwestern Uganda. Currently, Bonciano is a lecturer in Kamangu University, Uganda. His research is interested in sexual and reproductive health and rights. Bonciano is a maternal and child health promotion specialty. Prior to the lectures, he is a medical clinical officer and has 15 years of his experience. Uh, he's also a medical officer in charge of Bituama Health Center. Bonciano also is one of the four members technical team that developed the community developed the officer of manual for integration of sexual and reproductive health young people and women in HIV AIDS prevention in the community development labor and social development in Uganda. He is a registered medical practitioner and a member of the Allied Health Professional in Ministry of Health in uh, Uganda. Now we are welcome. We are welcome, Bonciano, and now we give him the chance. Here, we give you the chance, uh, Bonciano. The floor is with you, Bonciano, so you can start your presentation kindly, please. Thank you, thank you, Professor Hayat, and also thanks to Chris for this. Uh, it has started raining here. I'm putting on my camera so that you can see who is presenting. I hope the network connection will be good. Yeah, thank you, Professor Ayat, for the introduction, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, members, wherever you are joining from. I'm happy to present this topic, Fit for Purpose and Mental Care Services. Uh, perspectives from women with physical disabilities and midwives. And this is part of my PhD study that was conducted in Uganda. And this presentation is going to address specifically two objectives of the study. And I'm a PhD student at the University of Cape Town under Professor Sira's supervision and Professor Teresa. And the presentation is going to take uh, a format of about eight items that will include the introduction, the problem, the study aim and objectives, the study location, methods, findings, conclusion, and recommendation. Um, in many African countries, sexuality of women with physical disabilities has little or no empirical investigation. It has been constructed on hearsay and second-hand narratives, uh, usually from health workers, from family members, and uh, significant others, and therefore moving barriers to utilization of antenatal care services for women with physical disabilities requires understanding their lived experiences, and uh, meaningful engaging them would help to eliminate distorting their social realities and therefore enhancing the development of inclusive and mental care services for improved pregnancy experiences. World Health Organization recommends that antenatal care services be designed and continually improved based on locally generated data to overcome the utilization barriers. And the problem is that in low and middle income countries, Several barriers impede utilization of antenatal care services by women with physical disabilities. And some of these barriers include inaccessible infrastructure uh, and equipment, cost of services, healthcare providers inadequate knowledge and skills, healthcare providers' negative attitudes, 
limited independence of women of women to make decisions for themselves on matters that directly affect their health, among other many barriers. And this situation is more pronounced in rural areas than in urban areas in sub-Saharan Africa, including Uganda. And there is minimal understanding of the experiences of these pregnant women with physical disabilities, in, uh, especially in underserved populations when it comes to utilizing antenatal care services. Yet, antenatal care is a critical entry point for pregnant women to receive quality maternity care services. The aim of this study was to investigate the experiences of pregnant women with physical disabilities in utilizing antenatal care services and suggest the strategies for improving these services. And then the objective specifically was as addressed in this presentation was to find out the relationship between women with physical disabilities and health care providers during antenatal care services in rural southwestern Uganda. And then two was to explore how the women with physical disabilities and midwives perceive the disability and the provision of antenatal care services in rural southwestern Uganda. Uh, to give you the context, started in rural southwestern Uganda, as indicated in the figure, and Uganda is found in East Africa, as shown here in this figure. This study was a qualitative one, and we used a multiple case study design, and the, 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 uh, the unit for analysis was the process of accessing and utilizing antenatal care services, where the cases we were looking at all the women with physical disabilities who access and utilize antenatal care services at the health facilities, and also those who were accessing and utilizing antenatal care services at health center one, those who were accessing and utilizing antenatal care services at health center, no, at health center and utilizing antenatal care services at health center four. And then another case was those who are using and accessing antenatal care services at the district general hospital. The study was conducted in November 2020 to January 2021, and it involved the health facilities in rural southwestern Uganda. The population was uh, women with physical disabilities and uh, midwives. And the uh, disabilities were aged between 18 to 45, and it was the women were those who were pregnant or had been pregnant in the last three years, and those who had attended the antenatal care clinic and had a physical disability affecting one or more of their limbs, both upper and the lower limbs, their pelvis, or the vertebrae. The inclusion, inclusion criteria for health workers were midwives, comprehensive nurses, or double-trained nurses who were working in antenatal care clinic. The double-trained nurses are those who are trained in nursing and uh, then midwifery. The exclusion criteria for women with physical disabilities uh, was that women with physical disabilities that did not affect their mobility, stability, or dexterity were not included in this study. And exclusion for health workers was that those who worked in other sections of the health facility other than the antenatal care clinic were not included. And those who had no experience attending to women, pregnant women with physical disabilities were also not included. And then the clinical officers and the medical officers who are working in other sections of the facilities were not part of the study. The sample size and the the sampling snowball was specifically used to identify 12 women with physical disabilities, and the women were identified with the help of the CDOs, the community development officers working in the, in the communities, and the village health teams, the leaders of the village health teams in the villages where they were living. And then per passive sampling technique was used to identify six midwives 
from the three selected health facilities. That is Health Centre 3, Health Centre 4, and the District General Hospital. Um, the methods that were used in gathering data were in-depth face-to-face interviews with women and midwives, and also a focus group discussion with only women. And the same structured interview and focus group guides were used as tools to collect the data. Then data was transcribed, translated, and then later mathematically analyzed using an inductive approach. To conduct this study, ethical approval was sought and obtained from the University of Cape Town. And then later, a counter approval was uh, obtained from Uganda National Council of Science and Technology. In summary, before I go in details of the findings, these are the, um, are the findings under the theme fit for purpose and mental care services. And uh, the first theme was women's, the first sub theme was women's mixed experiences of midwives and other health workers. The, this one had three categories of which all came from uh, both from women and the midwives. The second sub theme was preparing midwives and other health workers. And this had two categories. The first category was health workers have inadequate knowledge on disability, which came from both women's data and the midwives' data. And then the second category of midwives are emotionally prepared, was only described by the midwives. The third sub theme is enabling disability inclusion, which has three categories a dedicated antenatal care clinic. That one came from both the, the dedicated antenatal care clinic came from women and midwives, but the last two categories, incentivizing women and health workers, and then making connections with health, with stakeholders, only came from So to have the findings in detail, the first sub-theme is women's mixed experiences of midwives and other health workers. And the women and midwives felt that the health workers were supportive. And Joyce remarked that I think they feel compassion for a woman with a physical disability. They, midwives, treat you well them in good condition. Then midwife number five commented that being disabled does not mean that you are not supposed to get services like others. So we have to make her a priority. We work on her. And we help them in case one fails to get there on the examination bed. You have to support her and put her on the bed. We encourage them to come back again. So the midwives also felt that they were compassionate and were coming and uh, they took priority in attending to women with, uh, with disabilities. And uh, the second category under the same sub theme is that health workers were un unapproachable. And under this, both midwives and women felt that uh, the health workers were were unapproachable, they described them as being rude, intimidating, abusive. And for example, Mercy indicated that they, midwives, can tell you to climb on the, exam on the examination bed, talking to you rudely, that what did you come to do if you knew that you can't climb the bed? And uh, Esther also remarked that you suffer, you walk with difficulties and you end up being caught up by time, and then they don't feel compassion for you, and eventually they abuse you at the clinic. The same views were reflected from the data of midwives. For example, midwife number three says that it happens sometimes 
and the, some midwives behave negatively towards women when they are tired. And uh, midwife number six says that some of us carry our issues of stress right from home. We have them here, rude midwives, and they behave terribly. So also midwives acknowledge that some health workers are unapproachable and rude to women with physical disabilities. The, the last category under this sub theme is that uh, health workers would leave you there. And uh, women felt that health workers would not attend to them because they would leave you there even when they would be in pain and, uh, and they are weak and they have disability. For example, Philly uh, commented that if they are not used to issues of disability, they leave you there. You stay there and you are in pain and they attend to the ones without a disability. Jory also emphasized that really, why can't they see you as one who is disabled and attend to you? very fast. Why do they first put you there on the chair and you first sit when you are in pain? Huh? They leave you there, you stay there and be the one to be worked on or attended to last. And the, the same came from was described by the midwives. For example, midwife number three says we serve them on the principle of first come first serve basis. Whether you are disabled or not, this uh, midwife says it is first come, first serve basis principle. Then the second sub theme is preparing midwives and other health workers, which has two categories. Here both midwives and, the, and, the, and women uh, showed that health workers have inadequate knowledge on disability. And uh, Esther, a woman with physical disability, says there are some health workers who don't understand well the issues concerning disability. And Joyce also noted that when you reach there at the health facility, they, the health workers, don't want to know, they don't want to appreciate that you are disabled, yet you don't have all the necessary care and support. And actually, midwife number six also uh, emphasized that there is locally under-researched. This issue of uh, disability inclusion is locally under-researched. And she says that we had never gotten such kind of people coming to us investigating disability issues. And now that you have come, you have sensitized our brains. And the second category under the same sub-theme is that midwives were emotionally unprepared to attend to women with disabilities. Midwife number three highlighted that first of all, I got scared and uh, I thought, hey, this person, will she make it? Will she deliver? How am I going to handle this person? Uh, showing the, that she was not emotionally prepared. And midwife number six says we could help her and bring her to the examination bed. But it is, the, it is a painful experience and it hurts. And she says that not every midwife can do it. But the attitude is the cause as to why one cannot do it. And the, practically some of them may not have had or may not have seen such cases during their practice. The first time I helped her, uh, it was very hard. You know, she was describing and remembering her what she went through as she attended to a woman with a disability. The last, the last uh, sub-theme is enabling disability inclusion, which has three categories. The first one is dedicated antenatal care clinic, and the midwives and uh, midwives here and uh, women felt that there should be a special there should be special attention given to women with physical disabilities where they should have a special room for examination. And Esther says, when you arrive, they should see you and attend to you as a person with a disability, with a physical disability. And then they quicken your process. 
they should put a special room for disabled people in every health facility so that we also get services and easily get help whenever we visit them. However, some women were opposed to the idea of having a special room and hope for her instead says that the midwives should be educated, that women with physical disabilities should be worked on first. It's not right if they are segregators. They feel like if they are segregated, they would cause some envy and acrimony among, acrimony among the non-disabled women during antenatal care. And first she says it's a matter of educating the midwives on disability inclusion. Midwife number four was in agreement that there should be a special program or antenatal care program considering different types of disabilities for these people. Like there are other programs for adolescents, for those who are living with HIV, like others who are given specific days and specific clinic days to the same should apply also to women with physical disabilities. Then uh, incentivizing women under the same sub theme. It was felt that if there could be incentives, maybe it could enable perhaps other women without disability clinic and then it could facilitate their attendance. Midwife number six says maybe if the managers can help appreciate those working with good attitude because they know all of us, they know every one of us. So if they could appreciate those with a positive attitude towards women with disabilities, it could enable disability inclusion in antenatal care services. And midwife number four says, maybe some other people come to the hospital for antenatal care because there are some incentives, like recently, because we want mothers to attend antenatal care as early as four weeks. We have told them that a mother who makes eight antenatal care visits will always take two mama kids. And so that's exciting, the mothers. Mama kids, are given to, to pregnant women as a policy in Uganda, and the mama kits they contain materials that are used, that are needed by women in emergency at the time of giving birth, like a pair of style gloves, surgical bread, um, a cold ligature, a gauze, a towel, soap, and other things that the mother needs at the time of giving birth. And then lastly, and the last category under this sub theme is making connections. And midwives felt that if there are connections with stakeholders who would refer or connect with health facilities, this would facilitate disability inclusion. Midwife number four says, if there is a woman with a physical disability in a certain village, the VHT, that's the VHT health team, connects with the health facility. And midwife number three, also, in fact, the mother who gets pregnant should be known. To inform us like the nearest health facility. If there is good communication, they go and find that person who, that is a woman with physical disability. We didn't hear you, Bonciano. Bonciano, you stopped here. We didn't hear you. We are so sorry. I think the internet connection. Sorry. I think we lost Bonciano. He will join us soon. We are so sorry. You know that the internet sometimes is not our friend. Oh, my God. Unexpected. 
I think, I think when Bon Siena will join us, you know, he speak about the three themes, which is the first one is women makes it experience midwife and others, healthcare worker. The second one, it will be preparing midwife and others, healthcare worker, enabling the disability. And what is the theme of his recommendation? And the first theme, we have to support it and carry. We have unapproachable and also they leave you there. So this is the, maybe this is the more common uh, comment they are giving, they are giving to them. Also in preparing a midwife and other health, health worker have inadequate knowledge and disability. Midwives all also are emotionally unbelievable. And this is really go to what is really bad for the uh, disabilities women. A dedicated antenatal care clinic in self-defense women and the health workers make connection and with the stakeholder for this is enabling. In conclusion, in conclusion, he said women with physical disability expressed mixed experience of midwives and other healthcare workers. Also, there are limited understanding of implication of physical disability and woman utilization of anti care. And the third one, it is an improvement in health system would be benefit to all women, making win-win for everyone. The recommendation from his study, there are a need for dedication antenatal care clinic with accommodative health workforce in provision fit for purpose for antenatal care services and also the apparent knowledge and the skill deficit regarding disability among midwives and other health care workers need to address education, training and mentoring. Also, midwives should consider equal partnering with women in an engaged moral and professional relationship. Midwife, as I said, midwife should consider equal bartering with women in an engaged moral and professional relationship as a norm, not an option in midwifery practice. The last one here, respect for women with disability, dignity, needs should be emphasized in midwife training practice. And thank you uh, for your uh, attendance. And we are so, so happy that you are joining us here. Uh, the four slides I read it in behalf of Benciano because unfortunately we are lost his own uh, connection. So here, 